I had to work for everything I ever got. I've never had nothing gave to me. Keeps you moving all the time. If you just go somewhere to sit down, you're not gonna last long. You know, you just fade away. California in 1873. Miners needed tough pants to withstand the wear and tear of the mine. A Bavarian dry goods salesman named Levi Strauss and a tailor named Jacob Davis were granted a patent to put rivets on pants at points of strain. It was a simple idea for a simple product. The American blue jean, the Levi's 501. In 1915, Strauss partnered with Cone Denim, a fabric mill in North Carolina. The golden handshake was a gentleman's agreement to make Levi's denim there forever. It's been 100 years. The same cherry wood floors offer a certain give to the draper loom's bounce for perfect imperfections, a distinct looking denim that defines the 501. Well, this plant here, I have been working for going on 20 years. I'm a head overhauler for the dye house. They're not a new piece of equipment, you know, it's an old piece of equipment. You gotta have tender love and care with them, you know. Yeah, we brothers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're both living pictures. Mm -hmm. The wooden floor serves as the purpose of rocking the loom. Like I, riding in the boat, yeah. up and down motion. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like clapping. I actually used to make a loom doll that would dance. I used to pump gas on the corner up yonder, and I came down here and applied for a job, and I've been here for 48 years. Oh, I've actually worked here for 58 and a half years. Over 20 years. 33 years. You drink the water in here, get the lint down to crack your back, and stay. Since 1927, Levi's and Cone have put a red thread along the edge of Selvage 501s. It signified Levi's quality and is now known as Redline Selvage. They are called shrink to fit. Moisture shrinks the jeans more in the legs than in the waist. Everywhere you need them to shrink and nowhere you don't. So they mold to your body like no other fabric. With the 501, you have character in each yard of fabric color, the construction. We have to go back in the past to make it the same. Levi Strauss believed in doing the right thing, and that was reflected in making blue jeans out of the most durable material, and it's carried through right to this day. Denim shows how a person wears their jeans, the way they move, even where they've been. Denim shows the work we do. I'm uh, Russ Miller. This is Mike Harris, my son-in-law. We're out here in the western desert, and we're looking for evidence of old western workwear. Mike and I go into old abandoned mines in the west to find denim overalls from uh, the 1800s. It's kind of like old archaeology, I guess. Miners repurposed their jeans. When they were worn out, we found them wrapped around steam pipes. Uh, we even think they stem dynamite holes with denim also. These are 501s uh, between 1893 and 96 that we found right up in the mine. Minor jeans, typically you're going to see some wax uh, uh, spattering right here. And you tend to get this kind of high whiskering right here. Since most people were right-handed, they sat on this. They were looking for silver, and they didn't find any. But they did leave some stuff that's worth a lot to us. The 501 began its life serving miners, farmers, laborers, ranchers, all the way to factory and construction workers. As American industry evolved, so did the 501. It changed as work changed. Today, the 501 continues to serve all sorts of workers for all sorts of work. Yeah, I'd say I know what hard work is. I mean, if I tell B-Rad, I'm gonna come help you load bulls today, well, I'm gonna go help them load bulls. I mean, I work 12-hour days. I don't really want to get up and feed at 5 in the morning, but I do. It's a cool feeling to build a bike yourself. You put it together from nothing. It's an inanimate bunch of parts, and then all of a sudden it starts, and you're riding it around. I have burn marks on all my jeans on the inside of my right leg from my exhaust. Most guys that work on their bikes like, just get so greasy and oily and dirty, but then they, yeah. they look way better. Inside best processes have stood the test of time. Cast bronze, glass blowing, 
and Stone still hold their own if you're willing to sort of do what it takes to make the work yourself. You have more love for what it is you just made. I come from the DIY music ethic. It basically, do it yourself. You want to make a magazine? Do it. You want to make a record? Do it. No one wants your culture. No one wants your dumb band. Everyone hates you. And you're going to have to do all of it yourself. Mailing list, nine hours. Do it. Band practice, six hours. Do it. I haven't slept yet. Here's some coffee. Cheer up. Art was work. Art was more work than the work you punched the time clock for. Me, I just destroy jeans. I'm not trying to look good. I'm trying to get to work. It catches the water that runs off the house. And it ain't much to look at sitting down on the ground. All rusty and worn from the strength of the rain. But it's the water of the flowers that blooms in the spring. Hard work hurts nobody. This what keeps you going, really. It started out being purely functional. That thing became a style leader. I guess it's very American. We are the people who always head west and make something out of nothing. This one item of clothing has transitioned through all those times and found its place. I feasted on cowboy films, images of, of cowboy stars wearing jeans. I mean, it just one went with the other. I did grow up in Texas. And cowboys, you don't want to take them home to mom and dad, but like you certainly want to be on the dance floor with them. My fantasy was to be a cowboy. Levi's were a part of having a cowboy outfit in the movies. They all wore jeans, man. Can you imagine John Wayne in baggy jeans? I mean, wouldn't work. I don't know how they got stylish in, in the general public, but somehow they did. The Western films of the 30s meant the whole country wanted a piece of the cowboy lifestyle. For the first time, folks were wearing 501s for its look. Nonetheless, function always informed its evolving design. They're a representation of every period in the same way as a good piece of design is. If you see an Ames chair, in the middle of a bunch of garbage, you go directly towards it. And Levi's are that way too. It's perfect design. All of these evolutions and changes were because there was a specific need or because it functioned better. Form fixed function. So if you build it to last, the fashion comes second. All classics were born out of utility. It comes from people who needed to work in them. And I think that that story it makes me feel like I'm not buying into something that is a statement that works. It's not trying to communicate really anything. It is made of four pieces of fabric, essentially, because if there was more, there would be more seams, and it would be able to rip in more places. I don't want anything around me, even a pencil or anything that's not well designed. A 501 jean is as plain as a glass of water. In 1934, the first women's jeans appear. Lady Levi's are in Vogue magazine a year later. They'd come a long way from the mine. By the 50s, Hollywood stars had elevated this humble utilitarian garment to a newfound glamorous status. The 501 became a fashion icon. Maybe the sexiness of a woman wearing jeans is the idea of playing with masculinity and femininity. If you put an incredible beauty like Marilyn Monroe in like Levi's and some rugged look just shows how beautiful and feminine and sexy they are. You have James Dean and you have everybody in the 50s is like, man, wearing jeans means you're cool and you're a rebel. You know, it's like, it's sort of against the law to just be the chick that's just like happy with wearing jeans and a t-shirt. That's what society was telling women that they wanted us to look like. And women kind of said, wait a minute, no, my butt looks amazing in these, so I'm gonna do this instead. These are 501s and they're a good place to keep my hands. I am wearing a short man's jeans. <laughs> I like to see my boots. These are the 1955. They're just rock and roll. I did street racing with my Camaro. A good set of cowboy boots, Levi's 501s, white shirt, or like today, the O red shirt. As I've gotten older, I like them a little bit higher. How it's tapered, if it's cropped, if they cut it, uh, if it's with a wingtip, if it's with a perfect cuff. There was a whole math part of buying the jeans. Your inseam should be two inches and your waist should be three inches and then they're gonna shrink and then they become perfect. When I saw this, I was just really, really happy. Oh, it's air conditioned. Trip for riding a bike that went blow right off it. 
The cool thing with Levi's, they're easy to manipulate, tweak, reconstruct, rework, reinterpret. I rolled them in the dark. It's a bit <laughs> indecent. It's a little. I'm a 501 guy for uh, 20, 20, 20 plus years. They either had to wear women's jeans or I would get 501s and then sew them up. I would taper the ankles and just be like moshing with 50 sweaty boys plus me. You know, if, if your grandmother uh, sews your ripped crotch or ripped knee with a little strawberry patch, that's yours. I mean, I never had that done. Some girls would like wear out like two little holes on their little butt cheek. What a lot of people want to say when they're wearing 501s is that, you know, I'm almost above trend. Yeah, kind of a few holes. You know, I've had these for like 100 years. 501s, penny loafers, and a white beefy tea t shirt. It attracted the girls. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> My mom was always like, You gotta wash it, that's dirty. But I was like, No, I like the jeans crispy. I like money crispy, and I like my jeans crispy. And I saw this Levi's ad on the big screen. It's in my mind and in my soul, it's in my generation. You gotta live it alive and walk it alive and live it in jubilation. I said, Levi's, Levi's, you gotta walk in the Levi's. I excommunicated myself. I dropped out and went elsewhere. Well, that looks pretty rough. Yeah, but at least it's freedom. GIs return from World War II with mechanical skills and shell shock. Biker clubs replaced the brotherhood and adrenaline they'd got used to in the military. These are people that are in a tour of duty. They're actually in combat. What happens is naturally you begin to form bonds through a military system that outlasts that system. Your guy who you were in the foxhole with, you can rekindle that or recreate that in a system like a bike club. I've been riding since 1941. The jacket, I got it back in 65 because I was in the Hells Angels. Well, we were Levi's. They had to be tough, just like women. You never give up on them. Bikers had to look. A Levi's trucker jacket and 501s could withstand the wind, rain, and whatever else the road dealt. It was also a canvas to show their affiliations. If you're rocking a Harley, of course you're going to have one of their salty old crazy Levi's, you got caught in the rain, and the more you wear them, the cooler they get. In the 50s, young farm workers turned rockers wore their 501s on stage. This juvenile delinquent style led to Levi's being banned in many schools outright. Troubled kids headed for trouble. With destruction and violence, their only outlet. In 1960, Levi's officially adopted the term jeans, the slang term used by teenagers. Levi's became a rock and roll go-to. People dressed up to get on stage, and all of a sudden you were like, here you are in the same denims that you, know, you, you were digging your ditches in yesterday. It's almost like a punk move when rock music kind of came to the fore. It had a lot to do with honesty. I think people saw like wearing denim on stage as kind of a symbol of that. Punk rock to me was jeans, t-shirt, boots, and I had a, a length of chain for a belt. So because I had to take it off and like brandish it as, as a weapon. I'm no tough guy, trust me. I'm very proud of all my record covers. I have some clinkers, but I'm not going to tell you which ones. This is Neil Young. This is after the gold rush. They're patched, which was the style. I mean, look at the jean guys, man. Everybody in this photograph are wearing jeans, except the manager and the record producer. Make of that what you will. It was and still is the garment of the outlaw, the rock and roller, the biker, the punk rocker, and a lot of other cultures that might not be allowed into the White House for dinner. In the 60s, intellectuals and artists adopted 501s too. Crowds wore them through decades of activist movements, from beats to hippies to LGBTQ rights to the fall of the Berlin Wall. It was a whole period about saying no, rebelling against things. I've always had a sense of humor about rules. Wearing Levi's was an act of rebellion. I was a photographer and I did a book on gay fashion from the 70s. The 501s in this culture communicated gayness. There's all these other signifiers. You can add keys, you can have handkerchiefs, put leather chaps over them. Some people would use sandpaper on their jeans in the crotch area. I got my first pair of 501 blues when I was 12. I saved up my birthday money, 
I got a size 40, although I was a size 28 waist. 501s, it, it was synonymous with skateboarding at the time. I fancied myself as a skinhead or a rude boy, definitely a rockabilly, broke graffiti, hip hop culture, the 501 just fit any of them. Mods and rockers, beetle freaks, punks and skunks and kooks and geeks, which pretty much sums up Levi's. Emulating Patti Smith and the Ramones and people who were living like poppers in New York City. I inherited a pair when I was a kid. My brother was a suede head, like a two or number three skinhead. The uniform was Doc Martens and 501s. I had to hide them. Uh, I was on my way to rabbinical school and, and I wasn't supposed to be packing jeans with me. And they weren't necessarily wearing them for any other reason than they found them or some chick stole her boyfriend's pants. The 501s, the Australopithecus of cool jeans. I've been through a lot of different scenes over the time and seen things in life repeat themselves. I can remember a lot of different periods in a long life. Times change, right? But it stays the same. We are pretty simple creatures. 